Good morning. Our gospel today is a parable about five foolish virgins who ran out of oil for their lamps and five other virgins who were wise enough to bring enough extra oil to keep their lamps lit. Of course, in this parable, Jesus is not really talking about oil or about lamps. He's talking about making sure we have what it takes to keep going in our lives, to keep alive the flame of faith, hope, and love inside of us. Is there enough oil in your lamp to keep you going, especially in the midst of the challenges and difficulties 2020 has brought us? Please remember to silence your cell phone so that we can worship God without distraction. Thank you. The celebrant for this Mass is Father Donald, and the preacher is Father Roberto. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace and peace of Christ our Lord be with you all. Let's call to mind our sins and ask the Lord to forgive them, which he will gladly do. I confess confess to Almighty God God, and and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, to my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us all our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Christ eleison, Christ eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, all heavenly King, Almighty God, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Almighty and merciful God, graciously help uh, keep us from all adversity so that unhindered in mind and body alike we may pursue in freedom of heart the things that are yours. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. Resplendent and unfading is wisdom, and she is readily perceived by those who love her and found by those who seek her. She hastens to make herself known in anticipation of their desire. Whoever watches for her at dawn shall not be disappointed, for he shall find her sitting by his gate. For taking thought of wisdom is the presence of prudence, and whoever for her sake keeps vigil 
shall quickly be free from care, because she makes her own rounds, seeking those worthy of her, and graciously appears to them in the ways and meets them with all solicitude. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Uh, my, soul, my soul is thirsting for you, O Lord my God. O oh God, you are my God whom I seek. For you, my flesh pines and my soul thirsts, like the earth is parched, lifeless, and without water. My soul is thirsty for you, O oh Lord our God. Thus I have gazed toward you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory. For your kindness is a greater good than life. My lips shall glorify you. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord, my God. Thus will I bless you while I live. Lifting up my hands, I will call upon your name. As with the riches of banquet shall my soul be satisfied, and with exultant lips my mouth shall praise you. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord, my God. I will remember you upon my couch, and through the night watches I will meditate on you. You are my help, and in the shadow of your wings, I shout for joy. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord, my God. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. We do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, about those who have fallen asleep, so that you may not grieve like the rest, who had no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose, so too will God, through Jesus, bring with him those who have fallen asleep. A word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. My sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you. Hear now a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. And may the word of God always be on our minds, on our lips, and in our hearts. Jesus told his disciples this parable. The kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones, when taking their lamps, brought no oil with them, but the wise brought flasks of oil with their lamps. Since the bridegroom was long delayed, they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, there was a cry, Behold, the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those virgins got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish ones said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise ones replied, No, for there may not be enough for us and for you. Go instead to the merchants and buy some for yourselves. While they went off to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went into the wedding feast with him. Then the door was locked. Afterwards, the other virgins came and said, Lord, Lord, open the door for us. But he said in reply, Amen, I say to you, I do not know you. Therefore, stay awake, for you know neither the day nor the hour. The Gospel of the Lord.
Good morning, everyone. I'm going to wait for that helicopter to pass. All right. How many of you here this morning and those who are online as well how many of you have ever run out of gas in your car raise your hands don't be ashamed come on I did it once a long time ago uh, before I even entered the Dominicans when I was a young man it was a mess I had just bought a brand new cool looking sporty car but then I ran out of gas it was very embarrassing so I had to get out of the car and I had to walk quite a distance to find the nearest gas station. I had to buy one of those gas cans, fill it with gas, then walk all the way back to my car. And by the time I did all that, I ended up being very late for a very important meeting. It was very embarrassing. So the point is, do not run out of gas for your car. Now, in today's gospel, it's not about running out of gas. It's about these five foolish virgins who run out of oil for their lamps. And they are contrasted with five other virgins who are wise enough to bring extra oil for their lamps to keep them lit. Now, of course, this parable that Jesus shares in the gospel is not about oil or about lamps. It's ultimately about making sure you have what it takes to keep going in your life, to keep alive that flame of faith, hope, and love in your heart. That's what's, it's, what it's all about. So I would say, therefore, that the lamps in this parable represent our faith. And the oil in, for the lamps is what we all need to keep our faith alive, to keep it going. Things like coming to Mass, things like prayer, like reading uh, the Bible, God's Word in the Bible, receiving the sacraments, going on retreats, going to talks or Bible studies, prayer groups, etc. We Catholics are so blessed to have so many ways that we can sustain and enrich our faith. And in addition to all these very good, explicitly religious activities, the reality is that whenever we love, serve, or give in our lives, that also enriches our faith. But in addition to all these things I've mentioned, I believe that the lamp oil in today's parable most importantly symbolizes our relationship with Jesus. That's what ultimately keeps us going. Because without a meaningful relationship with Jesus, all those other religious observances are pretty useless without that key foundational relationship with Jesus. And that is why in today's parable, if you notice, the wise virgins do not share their oil with the foolish virgins. It's not that they're being selfish. It's just that their relationship with God, their relationship with the Lord, is their unique and personal commitment to God, to Jesus. And so they can't give it to anybody else. They can't, they can't share it with anybody else. It's their unique and personal commitment. So, for example, your faith in Jesus cannot save me. Right? I have to have my own faith, my own personal relationship with Jesus that I am responsible for. Each of us has to make our faith our own. We cannot live out our grandmother's faith or the Pope's faith or the priest's faith or anyone else's faith. We have to live out our own faith. Our faith has to be our own and our own relationship with Jesus that we have to live out for ourselves. So to me, the ultimate question this gospel 
uh, presents to us, challenges us to ask ourselves, is how are we doing in our faith, in our personal relationship with Jesus? Let me put it to you this way. Every one of us who's been baptized as a Catholic has been given a lamp, in quotes, so to speak. That, that Catholic faith that we've been given by our baptism is like a lamp, like the lamp in today's gospel. And so therefore, the question for us becomes, is your lamp of faith, of your Catholic faith, is it still lit like those wise virgin's lamps in the parable? Or is that lamp of your faith, the flame in that lamp of your faith, is it diminishing? Is it going out? Or has it totally extinguished? Or is it alive and well? That's the question for us to ask. Unfortunately, I would say that there are way too many Catholics in that category of their lamps, the flame of faith in their Catholic lamps, going out or gone out. They're, they call themselves Catholic, but they have little or no oil in their lamp. There's, because there's, uh, so there's a little or, or no flame of faith in their lives. Their relationship with Jesus is pretty minimal because there is little or no commitment they've made to that relationship. So for example, throughout the many years I've been a priest, uh, a number of couples, young couples have come to me to be married in the church, to have their children baptized, and that is wonderful. It's wonderful. But unfortunately, so many of them, when I ask, well, great, are you coming to church here at St. Dominic's or whatever parish I happen to be at? And they'll go, well, you know, I used to go to church with my family when I was younger, but then I went off to college, or then I started working, and I just didn't have the time. So, you know, I go once in a while, and I go, oh. Or they'll say something like, I'll ask, you know, have you gone to confession, received communion? Uh, well, uh, let's see. I think the last time I went to confession was when I was confirmed in high school like 10 years ago. I mean, again, there's no, no flame of faith alive inside of them. I would say that way too many Catholics are sacramentalized but not evangelized. And what I mean by that is this. They dutifully receive their sacraments when they're supposed to. So they get baptized, they receive their first communion, they receive their confirmation, they might even be married in the church. And so they're sacramentalized, they've received their sacraments, but they don't have any sustaining, ongoing relationship with Jesus, and therefore there's no real commitment to that faith. They've jumped through the hoops, so to speak. They've received their sacraments, but again, there's no commitment there to their faith. There's no relationship with Jesus, and so they're not evangelized. Do you understand what I'm saying? Sacramentalized, but not evangelized. Like the foolish virgins in today's gospel, these kinds of Catholics, they have their Catholic lamps, but they don't have any oil to keep that flame of faith alive in those lamps. Their Catholic faith for them is as useful as a brand new, cool-looking, sporty car that doesn't have any gas. They're not going to go anywhere in their spiritual lives. I think every one of us here would agree that this year of 2020 has been exceptionally challenging, right? We have had to deal with so many difficulties, so many things that have sucked the energy out of us, that have attacked our faith, and therefore have diminished the oil in our lamps that keeps us going. For example, let me just give you a little bit of a list. The pandemic, the economic recession, the lockdown and social distancing protocols, not being able to get together with loved ones, not being able to celebrate Mass inside of church, 
not being able to get away for any kind of break from those loved ones that were trapped 24 hours a day living with them, right? We, we just don't have any ability to get away from that. The fires, the hurricanes, the racial injustices, the protests, the divisions in our church and in our country, the negativity in the presidential campaign, the uncertainty in the election process, all the awful stuff on social media and in the news and on and on. As a result, I don't know about you all, but I've noticed in my own life more negativity, more irritability, and even depression because of all that stuff going on, the anxiety and stress it brings upon us. And I have certainly heard in confessions these last few months similar things coming from you folks. It has th this 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 atmosphere we have this year where it has caused us all to struggle in one way or another in our faith, in our personal lives, and in our relationships. And so, brothers and sisters, that is why now more than ever, we need to have oil in our lamps. We need to pray. We need to read the Bible. We need to come to Mass, whether it's here in person or online. We need to do whatever we can to keep nourishing and sustaining and enriching our faith. Most of all, we need to commit ourselves, to recommit ourselves to our relationship with Jesus. Jesus, my brothers and sisters, is the key. He loves you. He will not abandon you. He will give you the strength and the hope you need to keep on going. He will give you the oil that you need to keep your lamps lit. So my brothers and sisters, do not run out of gas in your car. Do not run out of oil in your lamps. And most importantly, do not run out of Jesus in your heart and in your life. Keep your lamp lit. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, to him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, was born in the Virgin Mary and became man. He suffered and was tried under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. He rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. The Father and the Son is adored and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead. In life, life of the, the world to come. Amen. Amen. God of all ages, you are the source of wisdom and ever, every blessing. We, your people, come before you and bring to you our needs this day. That we may continue to deepen our relationships with Jesus and through it find purpose and meaning for our lives and strength in our difficulties. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For God's blessing upon our president and all our elected officials, and that peace and goodwill may prevail in our country, enabling us to work together for the good of all. 
we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. As we celebrate Veterans Day this week, we pray in gratitude for those who are serving or have served in the military. May the Lord reward them for their courage and grant them and their families safety, health, and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our loved ones who have died, especially those whose names are mentioned on the envelopes on our altar, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Violeta Acevedo, Thanksgiving, whom we remember in a special way at this Mass, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions written in our book of prayer and for all intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray especially this Sunday for all those who have been caught in the typhoon in Philippines and who are suffering the effects of it. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O God of endless love, in you we find our purpose in life, and in the shadow of your wings we find refuge. <clears throat> hear these prayers we have humbly made through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Pray, my sisters and my brothers, that our sacrifice will be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Look with favor, we pray, O Lord, upon the sacrificial gifts offered here, that celebrating in the mystery the passion of your Son, we may honor it with loving devotion. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation. Through Christ our Lord, through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fountain of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, 
Jesus took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy and ministers of your people. Remember your servants whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that they who were united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. Joseph, her husband, the Blessed Apostles, our Holy Father Dominic, our Sister Catherine of Siena, St. Lorenzo Ruiz, and all the saints and martyrs who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ the Lord. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence to the Father in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from all of our fears and our anxieties as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And grant us the peace and the unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let's offer one another the sign of Christ's peace. On you stay. Qui tollis peccata mundi, miserere nobi. On you stay. Qui tollis peccata mundi, miserere nobi. On you stay. Qui tollis peccata mundi. Dona nobis pacem. 
Let us pray together the act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, My Jesus I, believe that you are present I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. In the most holy sacrament. I, love you above all I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment, Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, Come at least spiritually into my heart. Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there. I embrace you as if you were already there. And unite myself with you wholly. And unite myself with you wholly. Never permit me to be separated from you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you. But only say the word, so shall be healed.
Let us pray. Nourished by this sacred gift, O Lord, we give you thanks and beseech your mercy that by the pouring forth of your spirit, the grace of integrity may endure in those your heavenly power has entered. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for some announcements. <clears throat> if you were wondering what that disappearing act was about, it was about a medication I have for, uh, pet, uh, for Parkinson's. And uh, it, when it decides that it's time for me to go to the bathroom, it's time for me to go to the bathroom. Sort of la venganza, sort of like Montezuma's revenge. Anyway, in the bulletin message today, Father Roberto has shared a letter from the Vatican which gives some explanation on Pope Francis' comments on gay civil unions which have caused confusion and concern for many people. So you can read about that there. As we enter into our fall and winter seasons, our weather will turn colder, darker, and perhaps there will be some rain. Really? We will still be required to celebrate Mass outside. However, whenever there is a heavy rain during our scheduled Mass times, we have to cancel our outdoor Masses at the last minute for everybody's safety. In that case, we will have private Mass celebrated and available for you to view online. Thank you for your understanding. So if it's a real downpour, don't come here. Turn on your television and, or your, uh, uh, your computer and, and attend that way. This Wednesday is Veterans Day, a national holiday. Therefore, Mass will be celebrated at 9 a.m. on that day instead of at 8 a.m. So on Wednesday, Mass at 9 a.m. In honor of Veterans Day, we'd like to offer our veterans a blessed blessing at this time. If you're a veteran of the armed services of various countries, and you would, if you are a veteran, we invite you to stand. So any veterans, please? Paul, there you are. Okay, stay standing. Okay, good. And I'd ask the rest of you to extend your right hand in a blessing over them. God of compassion, God of dignity and strength, watch over our veterans in recognition of their loyal service to their nation. Bless these men and women of courage, with wholeness and love. Protect them and their families from loneliness and want. Shelter them, heal their wounds, comfort their hearts, and grant them peace. May their dedication and honor be remembered as a blessing from generation to generation. We ask this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is our protector and redeemer, our shield, and our stronghold. In the name of Jesus the Lord, amen. amen. Let's stand. The Lord be with you. May the peace and blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit descend upon us all and remain with us forever. Amen. Let us go forth to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.